this photograph is really a very early gold mine on the Witwatersrand in South Africa, and it shows in a kind of elementary way the basic format for the processing of the rocks that came up from underground. In the foreground, we have the foundations for the crushing plant that crushed the rock, and we have also some of the foundations for the processing plant that extracted the gold from this rock. Once the gold was extracted, then you had what were called tailings, that is the waste. And this tailings wheel was a primitive way of conveying the waste from the plant here onto the wheel, which then dumped it into little trucks called coca pans, which eventually took it up onto this mine dump. The mine dump then consists of yellowish or whitish sand and some hardened slime or slurry, which they have also dumped onto this mine dump. And then in the left here, you have the tanks that held the water and the chemistry that extracted the gold from the rock. This is a photograph from a series on the dying gold mines of the Witwatersrand that I did in the 1960s. And what we have here is a primitive form of communication in the offices of one of the gold mines. Long before more sophisticated developments appeared. You have here a series of tabs indicating who would be wanting the boy. The boy was a man, anything from the age of perhaps 18 or 20 to somebody in his, in his 50s. And the boy would be called to come and see what the master wanted. Each particular tab was associated with one of the white masters or their office. So the chief surveyor, this is his tab, would put his tab into the slot, marked slot, go in there, and then he would ring the bell, and the boy would come, see whose slot, whose tab was in the slot, and of course he would have to read. Uh, he would have to be literate, and then he would go to the chief surveyor's office and see what the chief surveyor wanted him to do. A barber's chair made from scrap timber, probably mining timbers, near a compound that housed black laborers, migrant workers, on a gold mine near Johannesburg. A very elegant little structure, beautifully made, out of very simple materials. The men who lived in these compounds, as they were called, or hostels, which they later came to be called, um, had to make do with all sorts of things, and some of them became hair, hair cutters to their colleagues in the compound. And this was a chair made by one of them. These men are shaft sinkers. They are making a deep, deep hole, vertical hole, into the crust of the earth. It will finally be nearly 10,000 feet deep. And that hole is not itself a mining hole. The rock that these men excavate is simply waste. And it is hauled out of the shaft as the shaft goes deeper. But it is the shaft from which the subsequent mining operation will take place. Tunnels will be driven into the sides of the shaft to reach the gold ore. What is happening here is that the cactus grab, which is a huge steel jaw, which lifts the exploded rock that has been loosened from the bottom of the shaft, will lift the big rocks and dump them into this huge steel bucket 
called a kibble. It's about three meters high, and it will take eventually, I think it was 14 tons, or maybe even 20 tons of rock to the surface. It will also be used for taking the men in and out of the shaft. And what they're doing is they are lashing the kibble. They are shoveling small stones from the bottom of the shaft and throwing it into the kibble so that the shaft bottom will be left clear and clean, so that any misfires from the previous explosion can be seen and cleared out of explosives. Otherwise, the new shift that comes down later might drill holes into an explosive that's lying there, and that would be a fatal accident. This is in the salvage yard of the Rantretin Estates gold mine. And these are shovels that have been salvaged from underground. Each of these shovels was used by a black man to shovel rock onto a little truck of an underground railway so that the rock could be brought to the surface and the gold extracted. There were probably trillions of tons of sand, of yellow sand, in the mine dumps that characterized the landscape of the Witwatersrand. I think it would be true to say that almost every grain of sand in those mine dumps came from a rock that had been shoveled underground by a black man at some time. This photograph was made at Marikana, a platinum mine in the, to the west of Johannesburg. The men who worked underground to extract the platinum. And they had come out on strike demanding a living wage. At that time, they said they wanted 12,500 rand per month. Well, 12,500 rand per month was only just, perhaps, a living wage. They were demanding nothing very extravagant. But they had to make a living. And this was the plight of hundreds of thousands of black miners who came from all over Africa to work in our gold and platinum mines. Well, the authorities came out in force and the police shot down 34 miners on one day around this little copy, this little, this little hill. The miners had met here sitting on the granite slopes and, yeah, it was a terrible day in democratic South Africa. It was the kind of thing that, that could have happened very easily in the bad days of apartheid, but we never expected this to happen in democratic South Africa. We will not easily live this down. <laughs> 